This past Friday, March 24th, Behavior posted a developer update that has greatly divided the community. So let's talk about it. If you're new here, I go by Pyru Plays Online, and I've been playing and making Dead by Daylight content since 2017. Historically, I've been a survivor main, but I do play killer from time to time. Now, if you haven't read the developer update, I highly suggest that you go read that and then come back. These are all of my opinions and my initial reaction to the update. We won't be going over the whole patch, just a handful of things that stuck out to me. And all of these things are subject to change, plus things could pan out differently once we're able to test out everything in actual games. So if you decided not to read the patch notes for yourself, let me go over the highlights of this update. Automatic blood webs are finally coming to Dead by Daylight. Gone are the days of spending two hours on blood webs after rank reset. After years of begging the devs to add automatic blood webs, it's finally happening. Better late than never. Also, visual terror radiuses are coming to Dead by Daylight. I think we can all appreciate new accessibility options. And this time, it wasn't a panic response to a dev's distasteful comment on accessibility. All right, JC, it's getting really boring just blabbing about colorblind mode all the time. We've heard it a million times. We know. So, that's refreshing. We're also getting some auto haven map reworks in an attempt to try and balance everything a bit more. Nothing crazy. And that's where I personally think the good news ends. The biggest and craziest change, in my opinion, is the healing slash medkit changes. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. If you give either side an inch, they take a mile. And by that I mean people see that healing has been nerfed, healing now taking 24 seconds instead of the previous 16 seconds, and they will start running anything that slows down healing even more, such as Sloppy Butcher, Blood Echo, Gift of Pain. These are going to jump in popularity. We saw a similar thing happen in the 6.1 update when gen times were increased. Next! The Dead Hard nerf. Now, I am not a Dead Hard girly, and I never will be. Sprint Burst is the best exhaustion perk, and I stand by that till the day I die. But let me just say, I cannot believe it got nerfed again. Let me remind everyone it was already nerfed in patch 6.1, and it dropped from a roughly 74% usage rate to a whopping 13%. Now, it's steadily increased since then to an average of around 30%, but genuinely, I don't think it's that strong of a perk. We can agree to disagree, but personally, I feel like it only works about 50% of the time. Killers can easily bait it out, but enough people complained about it, so apparently it had to be reworked. Again. Let's also talk about the Pain Res and Call of Brine nerf. While I do think 3-gen gameplay is at a current all-time high, and these perks play into the current 3-gen meta, I feel as if these perks were nerfed in response to the devs poorly designing killers in chapter 26 and 27, respectively the Knight and the Skull Merchant. Especially the Skull Merchant, who's fantastic at holding 3-gens and not much else, even after the patch. If anything, she's better at holding 3-gens. They realized that Pain Res and Call of Brine would lead to 45 minute 3-gen games with Skull Merchant. So instead of reworking an already poorly designed killer in terms of power, they nerfed the perks. Now the next change that we have is flashlight changes. Surprise, surprise. The devs hate survivors. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. As much as I love to burn Wraith out of cloak, I can understand why this mechanic was changed. I just wish it was reworked and not taken away, but I understand the choice. Now, the nurse flashlight changes are absurd. Why take something out of the game because it doesn't happen as often? Why would that be a good reason to take something out of the game? Genuinely, I would love for someone to explain that to me because I'm at a loss here. The last thing I want to discuss are the Billy nerfs. Like, Billy players weren't already a dying breed, they've gone and nerfed his last two good add-ons. As well as increasing the amount of heat generated for his chainsaw while chainsaw sprinting. So the last handful of Billy mains out there, I apologize on behalf of behavior. For the longest time, before the crazy rework of Billy and the nerf into the ground, when people would come in and ask me what killer they should learn first, I always thought Billy. Billy was one who had a little bit of a higher skill cap, but you could get really good with him really fast and continue to use him at higher levels as well. And now that's just not possible. Needless to say, my overall feelings on this patch aren't great. And any amount of casual gameplay that was left in the game has been incinerated before our eyes. I've had friends and mutuals toying with the idea of stepping back from Dead by Daylight for a while now, and this seems to be the final straw. I am interested to see how everything actually works in practice. 
And truthfully, I hope I'm wrong about all of this, and that these are amazing changes to come to Dead by Daylight, but I'm extremely worried this is a step in the wrong direction. But what do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts about the patch down below. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next one!